Ball Lightning build is very strong in Season 2, which we went over in our last video. This build works very well without any Uber Unique. In this video, it only gets even stronger. The Season of Blood is the Season of Uber Unique in my mind. With the recent massive buff of Living Steel drop rate, how can we not own any Uber Unique? After maybe close to 70 or 80 rounds, this staff, a Havarian, a Uber Unique, finally dropped for me. Is this weapon OP? The simplest way to test it is to put it on. Without changing any other gears at all, my damage goes from 12k to 16k, roughly 33% more damage. Wow, it is only a 2 tip DPS, but we use data to make a decision, do we? Let's use it for a Uber Lady skill to see how it performs. For phase 1, she just died without doing anything in a few seconds before any mechanic kicked in. This is phase 2, she was almost died before she jumped up. After she landed, her HP bar was gone. No mechanic triggered either. Look at this weapon. 52.5% damage to crowd control enemies. This is really good for the build. 52.5% damage. That's a lot of damage. 30% attack speed. Wow, we get native attack speed all the time. This is huge. 24% critical strike chance? What does this mean? For example, on one ring, you can get maximum to 7.5 critical strike chance. You can get 7.5 on both rings and maybe also on the offhand if you are using one but 24% critical strike chance this is freaking good lucky hit 42% chance to stun i think we got stun on the uh, our chest so this is not very useful and then the unique stats gain a random strength effect for 20 seconds after killing a elite enemy this looks interesting. For the shrines, you have 6 different shrine effects and any of them will provide you 35% movement speed when this is on. So you have this for 20 seconds after you kill a elite. So this is really awesome. And you have artillery shrine, blast wave shrine, channeling shrine, etc. My favorite shrine is the Conduit shrine, where you become completely immune and transform into Living Lightning that does surge damage. This shrine can kill the Butcher in tier 100 Lightmare Dungeon in just one or two shots. The video footage starting right now is a full run of a tier 100 Lightmare Dungeon in less than 2 minutes. This is insane. We heard from you from the last video that this build is very mana hungry. Here is how this build solves the mana issue. First, we use the recharging aspect and the Chain Lightning enchantment. After spending 100 mana, which is after casting 2 to 3 ball lightning, chain lightning will automatically form and it bounces through enemies. Each bounce will give you up to 3 mana back. As this is happening a lot, you get a lot of mana back. Folks suggest using mana cost reduction stats on the rings or using skills such as fear research to increase mana regeneration after killing burning enemies. But after a few tests, recharging aspect is still my favorite because it generates mana, not only reducing mana cost, and it is not the depending on killing enemies. This is really good for fighting bosses. Chain lightning enchantment also forms a lot of cracking energy orbs on the ground, which gives you a ton of energy back when you pick up invigorating conduit from the skill tree. Next, if you find the Tibo's will unique pants, use it. This is the best in slot in my opinion. When you become unstoppable, you get 50 mana back. This is very useful during the fights. Some folks mentioned that using teleport enchantment will not give us unstoppable, which is true. However, we still use the original version of teleports which gives us unstoppable flame shield makes us immune which means we cannot be damaged and we are unstoppable so we proc the tibos will unique pants mana back benefit with no issue at all finally we roll a resource generation stat on our rain and offhand if you are using it with all this setup you can see in the video our mana is always going up with no issue to have 10 plus ball lightning up at the same time for helmet we have aspect of disobedience to give you a lot of armor while you are attacking currently we're close to 9k armor which gives us 81 percent damage reduction for physical damage which is close to the gap 85 percent for the stat you are looking for either all stats here or intelligent total armor maximum life and also cooldown 
Here is another footage of this build completed a tier 100 nightmare dungeon in a total of 4 minutes and 30 seconds including an event in the dungeon. The event itself took 1 minute and 20 seconds. So if we ignore the event, this build completed the dungeon with only 3 minutes and 10 seconds. This is very fast and you feel really good. I will quickly go over the rest of the gears. If you would like a full analysis on each piece of the gears and also alternatives, Please watch the video linked in the description and also in the right corner here. This is the chest, gloves, pants, boots. Ice armor rank is really optional here. You can use any of the resistances here if you are not capped. And also mana cost reduction is another good option. For the weapon, we're using a Havarian very unique staff here. If you don't have this, it is totally okay to use a one-hander and also a off-hand as in the video linked in the description. Amulet, Tell Russia unique ring, another ring. Quickly go over the skill tree. Firebolt, Devastation, Elemental Dominance, Chain Lightning, Enhanced Chain Lightning, Destructive Chain Lightning, Maximize the Flame Shield, Enhanced the Flame Shield, Shimmering Flame Shield, Maximize Teleports, Enhance the Teleport, Shimmering Teleport, Maximize the Elemental Attunement, and also Glass Cannon. Ice Armor comes from all the contribution from the items. One point into Ice Bleed, Align Element, Maximize Mana Shield, Maximize Protection, and then 3 point in Ice Veil, Maximize your ball lightning, enhance the ball lightning, and the wizard ball lightning. One point into static discharge, and three point into invigorating conduit. One point into unstable current, and also prime unstable current. One point into coursing current, and three point into electrocution. If you use the Aha variant, Wooper Unique Staff, I think you get enough damage and also enough attack speed, so I prefer to use various mastery to get more damage reduction instead of getting Ashes Ferocity. For Vampiric powers, we're using Prey on the weak to get a damage multiplier to the vulnerable enemies, and then Ravenous to get a lot of attack speed, which is very useful. And then Infection is really for the new unique rain, Tau Russia. So for somehow, Tau Russia rain says for each element damage type, you get a damage multiplier. However, this poison damage also counted as one of the damage types. So getting this will give you more damage multiplier by using the Tell Russia Rain. And also a Cursed Touch to apply Vampiric Curse and also boost your damage by using the Stored Souls to attack. And uh, lastly, I'm using Undying to basically get your HP back whenever you cast the skills. For the gems, we use ruby gems on all of the armor pieces to increase your maximum life. And then emerald on your weapon and also offhand to increase the critical strike damage to vulnerable enemies. And then on the uh, amulet and the rings, I'm using the skull to increase the armor. 250 armor per piece is a really great way to boost your armor. Enchantment number 1, we're using Chain Lightning Enchantment. This will give you Chain Lightning automatically after spending 100 mana. This is usually after 2-3 to three casting of the Bolt Lightning. So this happens a lot, and whenever this happens, it will bounce through the enemies and give you mana back, which is a must-have enchantment in my opinion. I'm using Teleport as my second enchantment. This enchantment will replace your Evade into a Teleport. So together with this, enchantment and also the original teleport. You have a lot of teleport while you are in the Latimer dungeons. And in my opinion, this is the best option for dungeons because you can use this to stun the enemies all the time, use the Raymond chest, and also this will give you a lot of the damage reduction after using teleporting. Super great. For fighting bosses, actually, you can replace this teleport enchantment with another type of enchantment. For example, fireball enchantment. I won't go over all the details of the Paragon boards, but I will leave a link in the description for you to read the details. From the starting boards, uh, you get a lot of the damage uh, nodes, uh, resistant to all elements and damage nodes by putting elementalist glyph here to boost the power of all these loads. 
and then this paragon boss overall is very linear and then go up to get the uh, enchantment master to grab a lot of the damage nodes as you can see and also resistant to all elements and put the reinforced glyph here to boost the power of all the rare nodes and then you go to Sisyllus Conduit and put a territorial glyph here to get a lot of damage to close enemies and definitely grab some of the intelligent node and also the uh, dexterity nodes here and go up to use elemental summoner and put charged glyph here to get uh, so here is really to get the damage multiplier by the additional stats uh, whenever picking up crackling energy you get the uh, damage multiplier up to 15 percent crackling enemy uh, crackling energy damage is not critical here and then you move in right uh, to use the burning instinct and then put destruction node here to get a lot of critical strike damage and also damage reduction from the elite and some of the armor nodes here. I think these are the only armor nodes you can get on the entire paragon boards. And then uh, in the last, in the second but the last one, you get the uh, fridge of the fate, which is a great uh, bonus multiplier to our build. And then put adapt glyph here to get a lot of master skill damage to boost our uh, damage output and the uh, last we go to the left to grab the uh, static search legendary nodes so this will basically um, get animus automatically be vulnerable whenever cast the chain lightning and because of the chain lightning enchantment this basically happen, happens automatically you don't have to do anything so this is really nice for uh, getting animus vulnerable and then you put the control node here to get a lot of damage to crowd control animus and definitely go here to grab more damage to elites and also damage to stunned animus if you want to see more content like this please smash the like button subscribe and ring that notification bell to never miss a video hope you have enjoyed the video see you in the next one